Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. As we lift our hands up in the presence of the Lord, the praise team can just help me with this little song that God gave me the other day. It's very simple. I will trust him. I will trust him. I will trust him because he's never failed me. That's all to it. Come on. I will trust him. I will trust him. I will trust him because he's never failed me. Yeah. Come on, everybody, sing it. Come on. I will trust him. I will trust him. I will trust him because he's never failed me. Come on, let's take it up. Come on, somebody. I will trust him. I will trust him because he never failed me. Oh, come on, let's take it up again. I will trust him. Yes, I will. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. I will trust him because he has never failed me yet. We give honor to God and to my pastor, Pastor John H. Boy. Oh, come on, put your hands together for him. And for a pastor boy in his presence and his absence. I said, when I walked into this building, I said, pastor is still in this building. I can feel his presence all over this building. He's still running it all the way from heaven. I'm so excited and so overwhelmed and humbled by this experience tonight. And I'm not a visitor. This is my home. I was a man. I was, as I give honor to God, to everybody, to Mother Boyd. Amen. To my mother. And to Lady Boyd. Amen. Uh, to Dr. Johnson and... Dr. Morgan, 
to all the elders, to Sister Tanya. Sister Tanya, they told me about your, your prayer conference too late for me to put my name on the brochure, but I just want you to know that I was only offended by one thing. You didn't invite me to preach for your prayer thing. So maybe next time you will invite me to preach because she was so dedicated with me in 5 a.m. prayer. And I'm so proud of you, my God. Never thought somebody that quiet and that reserved would step out and do what God has called them to do. And we need to put our hands together every time one take wings and fly. Amen. 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 And to all of the church mothers, Mother Walker, we had an awesome time in the prison when we went. And to Dr. Wilson, that's my sister right there, Dr. Wilson. To Dr. Wilson. Before you take your seats, I was sharing with the people in the car, and I said, I will, I will probably go down in history as a lot of things, but I think I'm going to go down in history as we and one that had a grand opening for my church five years ago, and on December 31st, we will have a grand closing because I'm coming back home here to Bethel. Amen, somebody. So the people don't be sad. I told the people don't be sad. I said, God just allowed me to grace you with this to do it. And I said to them that I would go to 5 a.m. prayer on Sunday mornings. And then I'm coming back to my own church. I'm coming back to my own church. So I'm on my way back home. And I've already told them that we are closed. And anywhere they want to find a church, go find a church. Because I'm coming back to my own church. Because this is a prophetic time and a prophetic season. And I'm not going to miss it somewhere doing my own thing. Somebody better give God a praise right there. Before you take your seats... Before you take your seats, if I were you, I would tell your neighbor, if you came today, you came really understanding part of the words of why God chose this time and this season. And I would have, if I were you, before I take my seat, I would tell my neighbor, we are in a divine shift. And if I was you, I would miss it. Uh-huh. But hold the music. Don't touch nobody dead because some of y'all turned around and touched somebody that was dead and all dried up. Don't touch nobody dead because they'll steal the anointing off of you. Turn around and grab you a witness and say, we in a divine shift and if I was you, I wouldn't miss it. If I were you, if I were you, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss what God is getting ready to do in my life. And if you didn't come for God to shift you, then you need to change your seat because everything on my row is going to the next dimension come on somebody say I'm going to the next dimension oh you can be seated in the presence of the Lord my God from Zion if you would get your Bibles if you would I'm going to be coming from several places tonight, but if you would permit me, I really would like for you to permit me to kind of take my time with some things because there's some things that I have to lay a foundation for in order for the prophecy to be fulfilled. And I'm not talking about a whimsical prophecy out of the soulish realm. I'm talking about what God is prophesying. First of all, we need to understand that if I can be permitted to just talk for a moment, we need to understand that what God has sent me to minister is something that I have profoundly walked out. And I don't know it because I read it. I know it because I have experienced it. And I know it because other people have experienced it. In order for us to understand prophetically what God is saying in this hour, we cannot, we are not in a position anymore, if I can say this, to leave it up to chance. 
that people would wake up one day after eating a bowl of cereal and just get it right. You know, we, cannot, we cannot afford, the time is too serious and too delicate for us to have our trust in the emotions of man as to whether or not we believe God is saying something. Because most of the time when we are receiving prophecies, we're only dancing when those prophecies agree with something that we have conjured up in our own hearts. Not necessarily meaning that it's from the Lord, but it's something that you would desire to have that God hasn't willed it to be so. And so by any means necessary, we don't care in this hour who would tell it to us. We just, Dr. Wilson, we just want to hear somebody agree with our prophecy. But that's not how the church at large is going to be shifted by an individual's prophecy. And so when I began to embark upon this journey, Pastor, I want to say to you that this morning I had to keep turning my head in that chair to the curtains and looking at the flags and just getting my mind off of what you were saying because I was about to jump up and run all over this church because your message this morning was so profound and so on time and you will know that because I have not discussed your message with you, you would know that what God is saying, he is speaking that to you and it is profound. When you look at the reason why we bless the Lord, the reason why we praise God, we cannot do that without going back to uh, investigate how we got the Holy Ghost, how the Holy Ghost came to us. And so when we look at that, we have to understand that the first sign of spiritual segregation was when Peter had a dream and God began to deal with him about preaching to the Gentiles. But really when the Holy Ghost fell, it fell to the Jews. And we weren't even in the picture. Y'all ain't saying that. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we were adopted into a royal family. So we were entitled to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the, one of the most dangerous things about this decade is that we have embraced the emotionalism of the Holy Ghost. And we have embraced the tongues and the shouting. But we are people who have left the principles. The principles that will cause us to live in a cycle of blessings. The Bible said we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Therefore, we are already born into a cycle of chaos. Which means by the time you're finished with one thing, here comes something else. And I may not be preaching to everybody in here. I'm just preaching to the people that understand the spirit of chaos. And I came to say this, that... If that is you, then your life is on schedule. Good Lord, have mercy. Uh huh. If that, I'm not, I'm not saying that to try to shout you. I promise I'm not. I promise I'm not. But if there is any kind of chaos at all that has been going on in your life in the last year, you are on schedule. You are on schedule. You are on schedule. And I say that because when you look at where we are, born in sin and shaped in iniquity, Pastor, we are born humanly to be evolving constantly into cycles of chaos and cycles of destruction and, and, and cycles of mishaps and, 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 and cycles of distress and cycles of oppression and depression. And we don't know how to break that cycle. And so what happens is we come to the house of God every Sunday and we get blessed and we jump and we shout. And I, I call it, we get a relief, but the cycle doesn't break. Good Lord have mercy. I don't know about y'all, but I got tired of relief and I wanted the cycle to break. The cycle to break. So how do we break the cycle? God decided that he was not going to leave that up to man to help us to break this cycle. So what the Lord did was he developed, and please hear me tonight, he developed his own calendar. And the reason why he developed his own calendar because the world's calendar, which is the Gregorian calendar, it starts at creation. God's calendar starts when the children of Israel came out of bondage. 
that's when God's biblical calendar started. In other words, the calendar of God for your life starts the day you come out of bondage. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So for somebody else, it may be this time of year. And for somebody else, it may be this part of the year. But for you, when you can testify the day that God brought you out of bondage, that's when a brand new year started for you. So the Lord began to talk to the children of Israel and he began to say to them, when they came out of Egypt, he said, let this day be the beginning of a new year for you. Let this day be the beginning of a new year for you. And that month, and I, I, please just, just let me take my time and do this. That month started in the month of Nisan, which is the month of miracles, which is the reason why they say that the month of March is always the month of miracles. It always feels like, you know, the miraculous happened in the month of March because it is the month of Nisan. And he said, I want you to take a, take a lamb and I want you to slay a lamb and put it aside for 10 days. And then on the 14th day, which is the evening of the 13th, I want you to slay that lamb. And that lamb was for your eternal destination. And then seven months later, on the calendar of God, I'm going somewhere with this, on the calendar of God, he says in the month of September, which is the holiest month of the year. The holiest month of the year is the month of September because it is the month of Rosh Hashanah. It is the month of Yom Kippur. And some black people in here looking at me like, well, what has that got to do with us? It's got everything to do with us. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And so, during the month of Rosh Hashanah, Lord Jesus, that is the month in the month of September that we believe. And I say we believe because I have joined my brothers and my sisters in Israel. We believe that that is the month that God decides. We believe that that is the month that God decides who would live and who would die. That is the month that God decides who would be wealthy and who would be poor. And somebody said, well, wait a minute. Is that legalism? No, it is not legalism we're not on a tangent of legalism we are on a tangent of levelism we are on a tangent of levelism legalism is what you do because you have to levelism is what I do because I love the Lord and the reason why it is not legalism because everything about Christianity is symbolism uh, the church is symbolism the church represents the tabernacle and the temple so if you're going to erase one thing then erase everything I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me the cross is a symbolism when you see that hanging up when we praise God it is a symbolism of the ultimate praise that's going on in heaven so everything that we do is a typology from the point of this people of God if you don't know how to do it down here you won't know how to do it up there yes if you don't know how to give God praise down here then you won't know how to give him praise up there if you don't know how to recognize when you're on the verge of a miracle down here then you won't know the miraculous when you're standing in front of it who am I talking to so what the Lord has to do is he has to put you in the cycle of blessings so that you can realize that my life is no longer cursed and that the thoughts that God think of me they are good and not evil and God is about to give me my expected end somebody say I'm expecting something yeah, yeah, I'm expecting something. I'm expecting something. Don't make a lot of sense right now, but I'm expecting something, Dr. Wilson. I'm expecting something. So we get on the, we get on the calendar of God, Pastor, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to your message. We get on the calendar of God, and he starts talking to us and helping us to understand what year it is. And I guess from a prophetic uh, encounter perspective, um, my job is to come and tell us what year it is. It is the year of... 5,774 which is the year according to the biblical calendar of the open door it is the year that every portal shall be open it is the year uh, y'all ain't saying nothing but see I'm gonna praise God by myself it is the year of the open door which means it's the year that you shall not be denied nothing uh -huh. it is the year that no demon in hell can stop what God is about to do for your life it is the year that God has designated that we shall leap forward it is the year that shall rest in the spirit of Manasseh that says God will 
cause us to leap away from the tribulation. And this is the year that we shall not remember our warfare. This is the year that if you dare to give God a praise in the midst of your chaos, this is the year that every door that's been shut over your head, it's got to come open. need everybody to agree with me. I just need one person to agree with me. I shook up. I said to me, hey. Somebody said, well, I can't praise him like that because I don't believe it. What I'm trying to tell you is that real faith is when you bless God when you ain't got nothing else to believe. Real faith is when you can't see nothing and you decide to give God praise because of what he said, not because of what I feel. Tell somebody you better bless him because of what he said, not because of what you feel. Oh, while y'all sitting down, tell your neighbor because your feelings is a lie. Tell your feelings you a liar. Tell your feelings you a liar. Tell what you're looking at is a lie. Tell what you're hearing is a lie. Help. Tell your neighbor I don't have to depend anymore on what I feel, but I bless God. What year it is. Know what year it is. If if we know what year it already is, y'all ain't saying nothing. If we know what year it already is, Dr. Morgan, according to the biblical calendar, Pastor, this is September the 14th, which means according to the biblical calendar, which is the month of Nisan, we're not waiting for December 31st for the new year. We already in it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh. And this is the year 2014, which means this is leap year. It only comes every seven years. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the year that God will go back seven years and God will give you back everything that the devil stole from you. This is the year that God will give you double. You all better come on here. Come on here. This is the year that everything that you speak is going to leap faster than it ever has. This is the year that there shall be no for everybody that blesses me. Touch three people and say happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Tell them happy new year. Tell them neighbor, if you sitting there and you can't give God a praise, you must be stuck in 2013. You must be stuck in the spirit of the world because the spirit of the world is not just smoking up. It's not just drinking up. The spirit of the world is when you don't have the capacity to move in the timing of God. This is the month. Let me help you with something. I got to go back and get us our past prophecy. The prophecy that we missed last month. And see, that's the ability. When you call to the prophetic anointing, it's not just to prophesy houses and cars. It's to be able to go back and get a time that you lost. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. So the month, y'all ain't saying nothing. The month of September, because I'm a part of this ministry, because I came from New York City, are you hearing me? I don't care what church you come from. Because of that, I can't let you miss September. Because September.
September was the month that God decided. And September was the month that God decided that I'm getting ready to bless you. I don't care who don't like you. No, you don't get what I'm saying to you. September is the month that God decided. Y'all ain't hearing this. I can't get nobody to hear this. That's why when you sat today, Pastor, to touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm not going to be blessed. I'm already blessed. Because if you made it up past September, you are already standing up in your blessing. Who am I with? How shut up? It's already on you. It's already in you. Your divine connection up. It's already in place. It's already done. It, it, I'm gonna say it again. It's already done. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say it one time. It's already done. See, I can prophesy. Wait, I can prophesy something so prophetic to you right now. According to the scripture, the reason why I know it because even watch this. Even today's date. Okay, the month of September is the month that God decided. Now that right there will make you just keep shouting all year. Because the Lord done already made a decision about me. The Lord done already made a decision about y'all. Because see, I was supposed to come before now. And then we had to change the date. And I said, God, wait a minute. Now what's God? But it was prophetic, Pastor. And you're going to understand why it was prophetic. Because how I know that this is the prophetic encounter. Because the Bible tells us that when Methuselah died, Hobi Ashamdaya, it said before Noah was born, his daddy looked over him and prophesied. And he prophesied and said, this would be the one that would bring us into divine relief. This this would be the one uh, that would take us into the rest of the Lord. Uh, but the Bible lets us know uh, that when Methuselah died, uh, he had to turn over the order to Noah. Uh, uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, but it was this month right here uh, on the 27th uh, that they were still in the flood. Uh, but tomorrow uh, on the 28th of this month uh, was the month that the dove came back uh, with the olive branch in his mouth. Uh, I don't think y'all hear what I'm saying. Uh, that on Tomorrow, another anointing up is about to hit this house up. On tomorrow, another power is about to hit this. Oh, I'm not getting nobody to talk right here. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing. It's dropping on everybody in here. This was the day that God declared that the flood was over. Tell, tell your neighbor, I've been stuck. Tell your neighbor, and don't tell nobody, don't believe it. Tell your neighbor, I've been stuck in some things. But tell your neighbor, said tomorrow the dove is coming with a fresh anointing for me. Tomorrow I get out. Y'all, I'm, not, I'm prophesying right now. I said, tell your neighbor tomorrow. Tomorrow the anointing to get out is coming in my direction. Tell your neighbor, said I didn't have the answer before. But tomorrow, God going to send his power. And his power is going to have a word in it for my destiny. Somebody give God a shout. I don't, I don't think y'all, I, I, I don't think y'all, Dr. Wilson, I remember the reason why I didn't, the reason why I didn't crack up when I went to jail, because I knew tomorrow I was getting out. See, y'all, y'all play with it. No, you don't hear me. Uh uh-huh, the reason why. They got me, they got me on video singing and dancing while I was in jail because I knew tomorrow I was coming out because I knew my family wasn't going to leave me there. And so right now in the building, the reason why you got to take a run for God, the reason why you got to bless his name, because you've been waiting for years, but tomorrow you coming out of where you are. Tomorrow the anointing is about to change on your life. You better give God a shout right now.
Pastor Wayne. Wait, 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 wait. Sit down. Let me, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Today. See, the fast, the fast is on schedule. And the reason why the fast is on schedule, because this is the month of Keshvan. Keshvan. This is the month of Keshvan. Pastor, <laughs> prophetically speaking, according to the biblical calendar of God, this is, see, when, when God gave me all of this, Pastor, the reason why the Lord puts all of this in place because he knows some days the devil gonna mess with your mind. Oh Jesus. See the reason why he put he puts it on a calendar. Yup, come. Jesus, that just hit my head right there. Dr. Wilson, he puts it on the calendar. The days that you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt what your state of life is going to be positioned in. So then it doesn't matter what I feel. I'm on the calendar. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was placed here before the foundation of the world was laid. This date tonight was on the Lord's calendar. So, Pastor, this is the month of Keshvan. And this is a very prophetic month. Because this is the month. Watch this. Uh, you see, the fast was the fast was very, 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 very important. Because to every calendar month, there is a tribe. And the tribe of this month is Manasseh. The tribe of this month is the month that we shall forget the hell we've been through. So you don't have to. Uh-huh, you don't hear me. You don't, you don't, you don't. No, no, y'all done, y'all done got the shot because I will shake how I see ya. But see, Pastor. See, Pastor, if I had a came earlier, I would have missed this. If I had a came later, I would have been into another month. But God backed that thing up because he said we can't miss this right here. It said Manasseh is the tribe. But then it said the limb of the month, Pastor. The limb of the month is the intestines. And so this is the month that God required that the Jews would take the fatty part of the intestines and put it on the altar. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that that in the end time, God's not going to judge by what he see. And God's not going to judge by what he hear. But God's going to judge by what he smells. Uh-huh. Because smelling, uh, the sense of smell uh, was the only sense that did not participate in the garden. Uh, touch participated. Uh, hearing participated. Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Tasting participated. But smell wasn't involved. Uh, so God said, I'm going to keep smelling mail for myself. That's the reason why in the month of October, you got to gut yourself out. In the month of October, you got to go inside and get the nasty thing that's been held up and put it on the altar. Because when God smells your guts, your filthiness, your lies, your hypocrisy, that's when God decides I think I smell somebody that's mine. I think I can smell somebody that I'm about to bless in here. Who am I preaching to? Uh-huh, so, so, this, so this ain't the month. This ain't the month of thank you, Jesus. Y'all ain't saying this ain't the month of glory. Hallelujah. Because we done practiced that so much. So now we professional praisers. We professional runners. We professional tongue talkers. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh huh. We professional saints, but what we're not a professional at is gutting out our insides. We're not a professional at saying, "God, that's me." Whoa! I can't hear nobody talk to me. I can't hear nobody talk to me. We're not a professional of taking the knife, Dr. Johnson, and turning it on ourselves. We're not a professional at saying, "God, when I was in prayer and fasting, when I went inside." This is what I came out with. Uh, and I'm bringing it today. Uh, and I'm putting it on the altar. And the Bible said uh, that this is the day uh, that we got to offer up to God. Uh, an aroma uh, that he's satisfied with. Uh, not perfume, uh, but something uh, that stinks in his nostrils. Who am I talking to? Because when he smells that, he says somebody uh, is sanctifying themselves. Uh,
what did we, I'm going somewhere with this. What did he reveal to me? Pastor Boyd, what did he, what he reveal to me? Is that the reason why we're not seeing the miracles and the breakthroughs? Because we're proclaiming stuff at the wrong time. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, what you don't understand is that the month of September and October is the month that God deals with your enemies. But you asking God to deal with them in July, that ain't the month that he deals with them. You better come over here and say something. So you better play catch up right quick. And you better start giving God a praise, telling God, I know you got it. You don't hear what I'm saying. You better give God a praise and say, God, I know you got it. Or oh, today I take my hands off of it because I know that this is your season and this is your time. Who am I talking to? Because you are the apple of God. Oh, my Shandaya. You better give him a praise right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, Pastor, he says, the reason why I'm requiring that they go into the intestines, that they put the intestines, the fatty tissue of the intestines on the altar, because when I look that up, the fatty tissue is the part of the intestines that holds the disease, the disease. That's where cancer starts. That's where incurable diseases start. That's why people can't stop hating. That's why people can't stop being jealous. That's why people can't stop running their mouth so much. That's why people can't stop being messy. Because they're still holding on to the fat of their intestines. Because they still won't gut themselves out. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And so when you open up your mouth and you give God a praise, the reason why you woke up on a person and they got bad breath is because something is stuck in their intestines that need to be cleaned out. So when you lift your mouth up, uh, talking about giving God praise, uh, and you haven't got it yourself out, uh, your praise uh, smell like somebody uh, that's got bad breath uh, in the presence of the Lord. Because he didn't ask you for a fake praise. Uh, he asked you for a sacrifice. Uh, he asked you to give me the thing uh, that you've been battling with, uh, that you refuse to let go. Somebody better shout right there, because that's where your deliverance is coming. I got, a, I got a testimony. I got a testimony, but I can't get to it just yet. This second, see what you were preaching today. It made a lot of sense. It made a whole lot of sense. Because this is the month right here. I don't have to look at my notes. I live it. This is the month right here of the month. And every month, Dr. Morgan come with a letter. And this is the month of a letter none. And the letter none, if you have notebook paper, and you got lines on your notebook paper, Sister Tanya, the letter none will come down, and before when it gets to the line, instead of it going straight down, it'll turn like a J, and it'll hook up like that. And it hooks up like that, because this is the number, Pastor, of the bite of the heel of man from the serpent. This is, oh, shy. it's curled like that because it represents the number 372, which represents the snake. And the snake and the scorpion are the two animals today that have intertwined themselves to try to bite the people of God. Y'all hear me? To try to hinder you from walking in your destiny because if something took a bite out of your heel, you can't, you can't get to your destiny. But also when you look up the number 372, too biblically huh? y'all ain't saying nothing huh? it come on it's equivalent to the messiah huh? because this is the month huh, that god will stand face to face with the snake huh? this is the month huh, that god will deal with deception huh? this is the month huh, that god will peel aside huh, from off of your eyes huh? every lie that the devil has ever spoken over you i'm not here nobody talk back to me because it said this huh, that those that begin to bless god this month huh, what will happen is that Jesus Christ will straighten out the line and the line will go down into the pit of hell and the line would make the devil vomit up everything he ever swallowed that belongs to you who am I preaching to right now this is the month of your deliverance this is the month of your freedom this is the month that your mind goes free I 
got a testimony. I got a testimony. Why? 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 Because, because the scorpion's bite is cold and the snake's bite is hot. The Messiah is the only one, Jesus Christ, that have both natures in him. He's cold to the things of the world and he is hot to the pursuit of righteousness. You don't hear me? That's why he said, I would that you be cold or hot. Because if you're neither, I can't deal with you. If you, if you look warm, I can't do nothing with you. Come on, if you look warm, that's the reason why he had to call the fast. And some of y'all still eating. That's the reason why he had to call the fast. And some of y'all still murmuring. Some of y'all still saying, can I just have a half a sandwich? I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Somebody still saying, well, do we have to just do it like that? Well, can I have some juice on water days and, and on fruits and vegetable days? Can I just have a, just one piece of chicken? And then you know why? Because we don't understand spiritual timing. And we don't understand that the Bible said that if you look warm, I got to mix you with my spit and spit you out. I can't do nothing with you because if you're cold, I can fix that. And if you're hot, I can fix that. But if you look warm, I can't do nothing with you. Who am I talking to? I got a testimony with what I'm saying. I got a testimony with what I'm saying. I said, okay, God. I said, you saying all this. And he said to me, during the month of Rosh Hashanah, because I told God, I told God, I said, look, 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 God, let me help you. Let me just help you with me. And that's what I said to him. I said, now, I'm watching the Jews making up 20% of our society and 70% of our wealth. I said, now, wait a minute, God. I'm watching these people literally take over the world. I'm watching, I'm watching New York City. One of the biggest cities in the world doing Christmas time. They don't put up no Christmas trees in the airport. They put up Hanukkah. I said, what kind of foolishness is this? As if the Jews is the only people that's around. I said, God, I said, God, now what are you saying? And so, Pastor, I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm going to challenge you in this. And I said, I'm going to read your word and I'm going to find out whether or not this be the truth. Because I'm going to be the person that's going to go tell all the black people it's a lie. I, no, no, no. And see, the reason why I'm not scared, because I remember when I came out with the prayer shots. And everybody said, she had prayer shots on her. Where's all that mess about? And now everybody got prayer shots. I remember when I came out with the Ark of the Covenant. She got the Ark of the Covenant. Where's that, 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 that? Now everybody in church has got all in the cup. So I'm not scared to be the first one. And I said, God, I'm going to try you in this. I said, now tell me, how is this thing done? So pastor, I begin to read. And I read this. And that's why I had to come. I read that in the month of September, that's when they put their trust in God. Uh -huh. In the month of September is when they go in and they empty out everything that they got. In the month of September, that's the month that they come in and they go to their bank account and they walk into the tabernacle and they give the priests they offering and they say, we don't, this is the biggest offering we got. They give millions of dollars. So I stopped in my trucks and I said, God, I'm going to try this. And that month I emptied out about $84,000. I was determined y'all and first of all let me just say this to you this is about my testimony not your offering uh -huh, I heard that demon too but let me just say this to you this is about my testimony not your offering uh-huh let me just as a matter of fact let me make it real clear I didn't come for an offering and don't want none what I came to do is get you out of bondage what I came to let you know is there's a better way out what I came to let you know is that tonight the devil stopped deceiving you what I came to tell you is that your blessing is sitting on top of your head and you don't even recognize where you are and if you will just open up your mouth and just begin to give God a praise you don't know what's about to break in this house yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, watch this. so pastor I said to the Lord I said okay God Dr. Wilson I said I'm going to try I'm going to try. And so the month of September, Pastor, I went out to preach. And I was preaching. And I would get through preaching. And the pastors would say, and here's your honor. And I said, no, I can't take no money. And I started giving. And the closer it got to the end of September, I just started giving money away. And I just I said, no, no, no. I'm going out of this month with nothing. 
because I'm going to try this thing. I'm going out with every bank account empty because I'm going to try God. Because he said that after Rosh Hashanah, the very first month, that's why I had to come here. You can fool yourself if you want to. He said the very first month after Rosh Hashanah, you shall begin to see a divine return. And I said, okay, God. So I begin to empty out. And so pastor, at the end of September, the last two churches that I went to, I preached and I raised the offering and gave them all the offering. One church I preached for four days and the fourth day I laid hands on everybody in the church. And it wasn't no little bitty church either. The last church that I went to, the pastor was losing his church and he was in foreclosure. And I went and I preached and he said, here's your honor. I said, I can't take nothing from you. I said, this is the last few days of the month. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting myself. And I, I, I'm, right now, I'm going to just try this. I'm, I'm going to try this little messianic thing right here. I'm going to try this thing on facades, you know. And somebody said, well, you ain't no messianic. No messianic mean the Jews that decided to follow Christ. Uh -huh. And because they, we are related and we brothers and sisters, yes, we are too. Amen. In case you didn't know it, Christianity was birthed out of Judaism. So stop talking about, hey, what that got to do with it? Jesus was a Jew. I'm not here y'all talk back to me I'm not here the disciples was a Jew I'm not here y'all the same Bible you speak in Chateau Corsata Baha was written by Jews so come on let's get this thing together uh -huh. so then we so then I said God I said okay God I said I'm starting to see this thing deception is starting to lift I'm starting to see that that, that, that we've been playing with this thing all these years and we've been jumping and shouting and missing the whole the whole concept of what you're trying to say to us up in here and I said okay so pastor I came out of that month and nothing and nothing happened the month of October came in, it looked like chaos was everywhere. And the devil said, look, see what you did? And you gave all your money away. You done gave every dime away. And so, Pastor, during that time, I was supposed to go on television in September. And I got too sick to go. And I said, well, I can't come. And so the people kind of got upset with me. They said, well, we're going to just cancel your show. I said, well, all right then. God bless you. I said, and thank you very much for, for having me and giving me opportunity. Because I couldn't let nothing mess my spirit up because I was trying this messianic thing. And I didn't want to get all toe up because I know during the month of September, you ain't supposed to be all toe up in your spirit. So I said, all right, thank you very much. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Crystal Power, bring me my computer. Because, Pastor, let me tell you something. You were sitting up in here today preaching. And I was watching people chewing gum and drinking water and looking all upside the wall. Like, yeah, amen. All right, all right. And a couple of points you hit. And the people would get up and praise God. And I would want to run through that wall. Because I'm saying they don't recognize what this man is saying. And how on target you are. And I said to God, all right, God. So I got an invitation. And a man called me from California and he said to me, I want you to come and preach on my television network. And I said, okay. And so the day that I was supposed to go, Sister Val, I got sick and I couldn't go again. And I said, I sure I can't come. He said, well, can you call in to the live program? I said, yes, I can. And he said, well, I'm going to give you honorary. I said, I don't want no money. He said, you don't want no money. I said, no, I'll do it anyway to bless the kingdom of God. So I called into the television station, Dr. Wilson, and I'm just ministering. So when it was over with, he said, can you tell me when can you come and preach like live? So we set the date, Pastor, for this month. Uh-huh. Last week. Uh-huh. A week from today. You don't hear me. And, and, and that's why I couldn't come. I had to come now. And so I went to preach. And when I got there, Sister Tanya, the man said, can I have lunch with you? And I said, but I don't usually go out with nobody before I preach. He said, but Dr. Bynum, can I have lunch with you? I said, yes. And so I went to lunch with him on Wednesday. And I was supposed to preach, Sister Tanya, Wednesday night starting on TV. And I said, okay. He said, well, I want to tell you something about the television network so you will know who you're talking to. I said, all right. He said, we have seven satellites. He said, we just bought the last two that covered all of Africa and all of China, North Korea, South Korea. He said, and now the, the, the continent of America. I said, wow, that's blessed. He said, I want to give you free television. And I was just all like took back like, oh, Jesus, this man want to give me free. He said, I want you to come on an hour uh, every day, seven days a week for nothing. So pastor, I did like you. I was like, well, God, I thank you. And I said, Lord, I thank you. And we kept talking. He said to me, he said, the website has gotten over 1.2 billion hits. It's number 149,288 out of all the websites in the world. And I said, okay. He said, now we cover the entire world. I said, all right. And he began to cry. And 
and I was sitting at the table in the lobby of the hotel looking at him like, well, what's wrong? He said, Dr. Bonham, you don't understand. He said, God told me that when I see you, I was going to know that you're the person. He said, I know I told you I wanted you to come on TV, but God told me to give you the whole network. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all better come on here. I now own my own TV network. He gave me the whole entire thing. But pastor, let me tell you how your message was something. Because the man that gave it to me, he came from Egypt and his name was Joseph and he was an Arab. You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you, something is breaking right now. I'm telling you right now, your wildest dreams are Yo, man! No, come on. No, wait. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. Let me show this to my pastor. No, go back to the beginning of the website. But first, before you go there, scroll down to the, scroll down to the contract. It says, this letter serves as a final agreement between the Way TV and Dr. Juanita Bond. As of October 17, 2013, the Way TV designates Dr. Bond, Juanita Bond, as the exclusive owner of the Cross TV. The Cross TV is an international religious television network, an affiliate of the Way TV. This letter outlines the rights, the ownership and the authority given to Dr. Juanita Bynum via the founder as well as the agreement of the board of directors from the Way TV and the board of directors was from China and the board of directors was from Sicily they weren't black folk they were not cousins and that's what's wrong with us what I'm here to tell you is that when God get ready to do it if he can't find nobody in America he'll go across the water but God get ready to do what he said my God I feel the Holy Ghost I'm going to tell you one more time and I'm going to see who going to believe it I said God is getting ready to do exactly what he said y'all better come over here and bless the Lord I don't get nobody bless the Lord I don't hear nobody bless the Lord. No. Pastor. Wait, wait, let me help you. Let me help you with something. He gave me all the bank accounts. He gave me all the contracts. Joyce Myers is on my network. Benny Hinn is on my network. People that I used to sit under, you don't hear me what I'm saying to you. Everybody that's on the TV, that's on the cross television all over the world. He said, if there's anybody on here that you don't want in here, throw them off because it's your network now. Anybody you want to have on TV, you can have on TV. And the first person I said is that my pastor going on TV. And my pastor ain't gonna have to, he ain't gonna have to pay one dime. I'm not here nobody talk back to me because God said no is getting ready to take us up. To the other side, somebody give God a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. I'm going to tell you one more time. And so I prophesied to my pastor, the struggle is over. The money struggle is over. Because here come my ties. The struggle is over. You go into the nations. Somebody give God a shout.
you some. Hold on a minute. About two weeks ago, Lady Valerie came to my church and I broke out and I told the people, I said, I feel a different shout. I feel a holler that's getting ready to come out of our belly. I said, let me tell y'all why. When the children of Israel got to the wall of Jericho, why the wall came down, God began to deal with me about it. He said, the wall didn't come down just because they shouted. The wall didn't come down because they made a loud noise. Pastor, he said, the wall came down because when they got ready to shout, they stopped thinking about everything they've been through. Oh! And shouted up. They thought about what they lost up. They thought about who they left behind. And they told the world in the spirit of get out of my way. Here I come. Somebody, you better give him a shout. So I, so I told I told the people. I said, God said. In this month, in this month, God said, shout. And the people was looking at me. Sister Valley was there. I said, when I say shout, I want you to shout, but I want you to put memory in your shout. I want you to put history in your shout. I want you to put in your shout. Every time the devil made a fool out you, I want you to put in your shout uh, everything he ever stole from you. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. And my testimony is this. I shouted one week ago and shouted myself right into a network. So don't tell me what shouting won't do. Now open up your mouth and shout. Come on here. finish that ain't all my testimony that ain't all my testimony hold on wait a minute that ain't all my testimony so then pastor the man gives me the network and as of today two weeks ago they just bought the satellite for all of Africa all of China North Korea South Korea Thailand Japan and the United States already without Africa Without China, without the continent of America, we have 160 million viewers. So I have more, more, more viewers than the last network I was thrown off of. Amen. Amen. So, so then my next challenge was, how am I going to get this network now in America? How am I going to get it on the American channel? How am I going to get it on the Comcast channel? How am I going to get it on this network and direct TV? Y'all ain't hearing me. And so I'm sitting up in church Wednesday night. And the Lord told me to preach. And I don't usually preach during the week. Because that's midweek service. And I tell them I don't preach. I can't preach on the Wednesday and go out and preach on Thursday and Friday. I can't do that. So I hit y'all on Sundays. Some Sundays. Because I'm already on my way out. So I don't want to preach any no way. Amen. So I'm, 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 I'm going to do this because the Lord telling me to do this Wednesday. So Val, I get through preaching on Wednesday night. And then I'm, I'm ministered and I got my wet clothes on. And I get through preaching to Dr. Wilson and I go in my office and I sit down. And they said, you gonna get out your wet clothes? I said, no, I said, I just need to sit here for a minute. And I just begin to worship God. And God said to me, call Bishop Sheffield. That was the man's church I just, and I said, okay, so I, me, I don't argue with God no more. I don't argue with God no more. And so I picked up my telephone, Pastor, and I called Bishop Sheffield. And he said, Dr. Bynum, I was trying to reach him. He said, because I want to give you my testimony. He said, when you left and you prophesied to me, he said, God sent a man and the man bought my church from me and put it in my name and then gave me $10,000 to fix the pipes that was broke. I said, well, Pastor Sheffield, well, let me tell you about my testimony. 
because I said we was going to have one. And I started telling the man about my testimony. And then I said, well, you pray for me. Because you know, Pastor Bishop, uh, my challenge is going to be getting uh, the, 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 the network on DISH and, 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 and getting on, on, on Comcast. He said, Dr. Bynum, what you talking about? I'm the one that walked the word network to the Comcast. I used to work for Comcast. The presidents of DISH Network and Direct TV and Comcast is my friend. And I'm going to help you because when I didn't have nothing, you preached for me and you showed for me. And I got, I got a call before I left getting on the plane coming here telling me that it was already done. You better give God. Oh, oh Jesus. Somebody give him a prize. I said he can do anything. I said he can. He will. He has. Wait a minute, Dr. Wilson. So pastor, I had a dream and in the dream, I was swimming underwater and every time I got ready to come up, the pressure of the water would push me back down. And I said, God, how am I gonna, how am I gonna breathe? And the Lord said, breathe from within. Jesus. And I said, okay, Jesus. But I got to tell y'all this. Who has show Y'all, before this happened, he sent me on a fast. And the fast was to take Pastor Boyd's oil, to take Apostle's oil. And for 2,000 hours, 2,000 hours, drink it, put it on my head, put it on my hands. And when I'm drinking it, he said, turn it up and drink it and lift your left hand. Well, why the left hand? Because the Jews have denoted and studied. And the rabbi says that the right hand has the vision of God in it. And when you lift the right hand in, it mirrors the will of God. But the left hand was called to work the earth realm. Y'all, and that's why when you don't lift both of them, you only get one of them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's why when you don't clap both of them, you only get one of them. So shit nobody have to tell you to clap your hands. Because when you're clapping your hands, you're taking that right hand. And you're smacking the will of God into that left hand. And that left hand going to work the earth realm. Y'all better come on here. You better come on here. You better come on here and give God a praise. So I lift my left hand up. And, 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 and Elder Boyd, I was, I was going through some changes. And I was going through some, I got to tell y'all this. And I was going through some changes. And so in my prayer room, right down there by my prayer bed, I took the picture. Watch this. <laughs> I took the picture of Pastor Boyd. And I had the picture up there. And I would just be crying and crying and crying. And every time I got ready to come back to Bethel to visit, I couldn't come back to this time. I would just cry and cry and cry. I mean, I, I, I would say, I'm going tomorrow. And I would think about pastors, and I just can't go. Oh God, I just can't go. And I would just messed up. And just messed up, and messed up. And so when God says, start drinking that oil. And so I start drinking the oil. And God said to me, what does the priest do? I said, the priest take the people's offering and he takes it into the presence of the Lord behind the veil. He said, well, all right, because if that's the case, then guess what? In the natural, Pastor Boyd could not accomplish what he needed to accomplish for your life. And he said, and he died with all of us in him. And God said, it was so prevalent that he didn't stop him at the veil. He let him come all the way to the throne because he had to bring the prayer request all the way to the throne of God without any more interception. Y'all, no, no, you don't hear me. And so the Holy Ghost said to me, your father was a priest. He said, now you drink this oil because when you drink this oil down, the oil that he prayed over, you get ready to inherit. And so for 2,000 hours, I drank that 
ordered and when it ended miracles started happening because the Holy Ghost said why you in mourning you missing the miracle why you in mourning you missing the transfer there's a transfer that's falling up right now in this building no weapon y'all sitting there looking at me like I don't feel like praising God I'm here to tell you right now something is shifting up right now I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing you I'm not hearing you if you keep him dead your vision gonna die hey somebody give God praise my Joseph my Joseph you ain't gonna believe this pastor my Joseph let me say this let me get down here and say this so y'all can see this. My Joseph, that came from Egypt, how he got saved, he was converted. And when the Egyptians found out that he loved the Lord, they broke his legs and they threw him in a pit. This is the honest to God's truth. They threw him in a pit and fractured his skull. And the day that he was supposed to be executed, they pulled him out of the pit with broke legs, concussion. He was beaten so bad he could barely see. And they said, do you still believe in Jesus? He said, yes, I do. He said, but Dr. Juanita, while I was in that pit, I had a dream of satellites. And I started dreaming about TV. And I started seeing America. And I said, God, I don't know how to speak English. Why are you showing me a channel that's going all over the world? Because you said this morning that God going to let your Joseph have a dream. And God show by what you said to us this morning is somebody in here. God got a Joseph having a dream about you. And all you got to do is bless God because you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure it out. But the person that's going to bless your life, they having a dream. Like Martin Luther King said, I had a dream. Somebody shout right now. Joseph dreamed about me and didn't even know me. He dreamed that somebody from America was going to have to take the station. He was dreaming about me in Egypt. And when they got ready to execute him, put the sword to his neck, they said the soldier dropped the sword. They said, I don't know why I'm letting you go, but get out of here. And so his parents helped him get out of Egypt. And while I was preaching on TV that night, his mother and father is still in Egypt. And they said, we're going to kiss you on both sides of your cheek. Because what you've done, you've shifted the kingdom. I want you to understand something. That when God start talking about that, that he's going to give us a promise. It's got to come out of Egypt. And if you don't learn how to praise him, right where you are, you will never get to the promise land. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. Praise him. Pastor, let me, let me, let me help people right now. Let me help you right now. Let me help you right now. Because y'all giving God, y'all giving God a church praise. Y'all giving God one of them hassle. Huh? No, I'm talking about the kind of praise that says to God, you up to something. And I don't know what you get ready to do. And I'm not going to question you. But you take the foolish things to confound the wise. And you wouldn't bring this woman in here and give her a testimony like this. And a season like this. And a month like this. And you ain't got nothing with my name on it. So God, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. 
going to help you out with this one. Dr. Morgan, this is what he gave me when he told me to shout. When he told me to shout. And I got ready to shout. And I was doing like some of y'all. I was uh, like that. And it came to me. It came to me. And I don't know where it came from, Sister Tanya. But I said, God, if you didn't tell me to do this, this is what freed up my holler. I said, if you didn't tell me to do this, then bless me because I thought it was you. No, you, you, no, you didn't hear me. If you didn't tell me to bless you like this, then bless me because I thought it was you. So I'm getting ready to shout because everything down in my spirit is telling me to shout because I'm about to get a breakthrough. Now open up your mouth and give God a shout.
Hello, Shata. What you don't know, what you don't know is this. You only got until the 31st of this month to get a real holler out. Y'all playing with it, but you won't schedule up for the first time in your life. You won't God schedule up. You better open up your mouth. Even if you don't believe it, the way the Jews get blessed, not because they feel it, but because they obey it. I'm going to give you one more chance because the word of God says that I've spoken once but you heard it twice that power belongs to God the word of God said I've spoken once but you heard it twice that power belongs to God and Dr. Wilson what God revealed to me I said why you said twice he said because I've spoken once but the first time you heard it was your time to believe it but the second time you heard it was your time to obey it so when you can't believe just obey because power belong to God open up your mouth give God a shout for his power is hurting. Somebody's saying my side is hurting. Somebody's saying my back is hurting. But the Bible said that Israel was in exile for 70 years. But Rachel was a matriarch. But the Bible said that she had to push. She had to push out Benjamin. And while she was giving birth she was dying up and I hear the Lord saying up if you shout it up and you don't feel up like you about to die you ain't giving birth to nothing now open up your mouth and give God a shout
The latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. The latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. The latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. Say us! Say us! I said, say us! Tell me us! Oh! 
God just began to just bless me and me listening to that tape. And on my way to the airport, I was just trying to be obedient because I've been preaching all weekend in my life coach conference. But when Pastor called me and told me he wanted me to be in church Sunday morning, I had to stay up all night because I'm not going to treat him any different than I did a pastor boy. Because he's my pastor. And when he said, I want you to be in church Sunday morning, I was so tired and I was coming down the expressway. And that song just took me up in the spirit. And even on the plane. And Pastor, what you don't even know is that in the last two and a half, three months, Sister Valerie can testify this. All we've been playing in our church is order my steps. I played it last night to end the conference. I played it over the stereo. I play it every Sabbath for the last three months. It's on repeatedly. Order my steps. When God told me to come, this pastor asked me to come. I knew that he's done so many other things. I can go on and on and on to testify. But I know that we have hit the biblical calendar of God and God has taken the guessing game out of what he's going to do for us. I don't have to guess and wonder and think. My responsibility is just to stay on schedule. Yes, 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 yes. My responsibility is if he tell me this month he going to bless me. If he tell me this month he want me to stay in the posture of faith praising, that's what I do. I don't need nobody to come and say, baby God wants you to praise God. No, I, I got a calendar. I got a biblical calendar to tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. And what I'm to expect from God. And when I aligned myself with that calendar. Because what people don't understand in this building. That because some of the mistakes that we have made. You have already been cancelled off of America's calendar. You are already a statistic. And your only way of survival is for you to change calendars. I heard the Lord say you are to know about one but follow the other one. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I heard the Lord say, you are to know about one, but follow the other one. Oh, tell somebody, it's time to get on the Lord's calendar. Uh, it's time to get on the Lord's calendar. Tell somebody, it's time to get on the Lord. Oh, the Lord's calendar. Pastor, it wasn't just that. During this same month, is when the people called me and told me, we approve you for a $1.5 million loan for you to buy the building that you've been in. And then the, one, of the, one of the people that are the board members that signed over was a man from China who's a billionaire. And he said, I need to come and look at your building and what I want you to do is make me a list of everything you need from cameras to everything. Because God told me to sow into this. 
No, I'm here to tell you, you better jump on God's calendar. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me in here. I came in this building because my spirit said, enough is enough. We can't chance it no more. Because now we're carrying another man's vision. We can't chance it anymore. Because now it's time for us to embrace the new anointing that's coming. Are you hearing me? I don't know if you really, I don't know if you really believe it, but Sister Valerie, I believe it. I believe it, Dr. Johnson, down to the letter. I believe it down to the letter, Dr. Morgan, that at 12 o'clock midnight, the spirit of the dove is coming and he's going to have a leaf and olive branch in his mouth because the olive branch is telling me that there is some anointing somewhere waiting on me. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm, no, I'm here to tell you that by 12 o'clock midnight, the flood is over. You know, come on, somebody better, come on. No, no, you... No, 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 you can praise God for real. You can praise God for real. Because it was this month. It was this very month. It was this very day. This very day was the last night. This very day was the last night they spent in the ark. The next day. The very next day, send it out again. Send the dove out again. That's why some of y'all sitting here and I said, go ahead and shout and praise God. And he said, praise God. You missing your opportunity to send your dove out. You better send your dove out. You better send the praise out of your spirit. Send it all out. Send it out. It's going to come back with the young breaker. With the young breaker in his mouth. Send it out. Send it out. Send it out. If you send your dove out, it's going to come back with a yoke breaker in his mouth. Come on here. Tell your neighbor, if you send your dove out, it's going to come back with a yoke breaker in his mouth. I'm just shouting because the force of Bethel is going on TV. The force of Bethel is going on TV, but no charge. No charge. Because she opened up her mouth and gave God a praise. Work got the audacity to be named the cross treaty, the cross TV, which means if you don't carry one, you can't lift up one. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Everybody in here that's done carried a cross, 
You better give God a praise right now. Dr. Juanita Bonner from the New Greater Bethel Church. Who been to hell and back, but God promised. He promised. I'm not a man, but I should lie. He promised. Somebody better praise him. Because he promised never to leave me. He promised to restore the years that the king of Rome and the father of Rome has eaten up. why even if you don't want to say it even if you don't feel it even if you can't see it you better open your mouth and tell your neighbor it's already done and tell your neighbor say neighbor if he did it for her he got to do it for me too now you better give him a praise in China. They will see you preaching in Australia. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Wait a minute. And then we gonna really mess them up. We gonna go back and get past the boy's old tapes. And they gonna see him too. So he is going to the nation. Ah! You better get him a shout. Because the Samaritans are coming. 
hand. Everybody in here, do your hand like this. Do your hand like this. Do your hand like this. Because like God said, whatever it is you thought he was going to do for you, it's too smart. It's too, that's what that's me. You telling the devil it's too smart. Because what he got for me is bigger than this. Now give God a praise. I had to come to New York before this month was up. I had to Because I had to. I had to drop in this place by the grace of God. Oh, sweet spirit. I take no credit of myself. I'm nothing but nobody. But I had to come in this place so that the end of what God has already done could be dropped in the building. So what has shifted in the atmosphere is not the spirit of God going to do it. What has shifted in the atmosphere is the spirit that is already done. Who am I talking to? I double dare you to just say it's already done. I double dare you to say it's already done. I double dare you to say it's already done. Because when does the Lord do it? He does it when chaos show up. That's why you got to praise him right now because it's already done. came in this place because he spoke a word to me and I told my pastor before I came I didn't give him my testimony I said pastor I can't speak it but I know the Lord is sending me I said I can't speak it but I know that the Lord is sending me I said but what I want to say to you is this When I get to Bethel, I don't want a dime. Because the Lord has sent me on a journey for the last two and a half months of me watching God do it without systematic means. Me watching God do it, Dr. Johnson. Without a dime in my bank account. But everything I need, he provided it. 
because I forgot to tell you that the month of September and October is the month of divine trust. It's the month of divine trust. It's the month that your trust go to the realm of divinity, comes out of the flesh realm. That's why you're able to do stuff that you don't normally do because it's divine. It's not natural, it's spiritual. It said that this is the month, the month of September and October is when the king goes out into the field and he leaves his entourage and his soldiers and he let the people come out and talk to him face to face and tell him all of their issues. This is the month that you get a face to face encounter. That's why we call it a prophetic encounter. Not because of the way we used to call it a prophetic encounter. This is the month that you get an audience with God. That's what pastor's been talking about. You and God. Because this is the month that he's going to do it for you. I didn't say that. You ain't even got to shout. It's on the calendar. It's on the calendar. This month is on the calendar. It's on the calendar that, that he would take the nun. The nun is a letter that's in the word Keshvan. And he would take the nun and he would straighten it out. This is the month that the Lord will straighten it out. Now this is the prophecy. This is the prophecy. He ain't got but a few more days to do it. See, y'all play with it, y'all. He got to the 31st. I'm not hearing nobody. Y'all play with it too much. It's on the calendar that God has to keep his word because he designed this calendar. He has to do it by the 31st. first I will be on my way to Africa I feel something so powerful in this building when I got on the plane I told pastor I said no and God began to talk to me he said the people listen to this there's a divine trust in this building I want them to hear this that has nothing to do with the guest speaker it has nothing to do with the speaker going to the pastor saying and can I have Dr. Wilson know I'm telling the truth because I done came to her church and did the same thing when God said do it I do it I don't get behind closed doors when God said leave every dime I don't say well doc I just said that no every penny because, Pastor, this is my last Kesh Von C. I'm going to get another miracle. Y'all I didn't have no more speaking engagements before the month is out. This is my last one. So the Lord squirrels Bethel in here so I can get my last little miracle in here. So I can get my, y'all ain't saying, no, baby, I'm preaching for free. You don't hear me what I'm saying. <laughs> because I know if he done gave me a network, ain't no telling what he might do next. He may turn around and give me a state. He's liable to give me a country. No, that's what he's doing now. He may call somebody that's called me up and say, we don't want the country of Guatemala. We just want to give it to you because we saw you on the cross TV preaching. Like that lady on Love Thy Neighbor, he did that. 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 Them people signed that network over to me. And pastor, what I'm going to preach tomorrow night is going to be another reason why. They signed it over to me on the Sabbath day, Dr. Wilson. 
Who give you a network on a Saturday? They got through signing the papers and said, now, Dr. Bynum, let me tell you about my faith. Dr. Michelle, I, I brought an ink pen from Mont Blanc a year ago, Pastor. And the ink pen was designed by Mahatma Gandhi. It was a $5,000 pen, and I bought the pen. Amen. And I told my sister, I said, I'm going to carry this pen around in my purse, and I ain't going to use this pen until it's a multi-billion dollar deal. I carried that ink pen around in my purse for a year and had never used it. When I got to that table, they say it's time to sign. I said, hold, hold on one minute. I pulled out my pen. And when the Chinese man said, what kind of pen is that? I said, the Arab man said, that's a nice pen. I said, thank you. He said, well, what is it? Who is it by? I said, Mahatma Gandhi. He said, be the change you want to see in the world. He said, okay. And pastor, I signed my name. And when I got ready to do signing my name, I went to put my pen up. Dr. Dr. Johnson, the Chinese man said, can I sign with your pen? I said, you certainly can take your billion dollar fingers and use my pen. When he got through signing, the Arab man said, can I use your pen? You can take your Egyptian fingers and use my pen too. When he got through signing, the man from Italy said, can I sign your pen? Yes, you can, Mr. Paris, France, French. Take it. When everybody got through using the pen of the prophet, Then they said to me, Dr. Wilson, prophet of God, lay your hands on the contract. I got pictures to prove it. They said, bless it. And when I got through blessing, the Chinese man looked up and put his fingers up and he looked into the camera. We got it on camera. He said, this is the divine will of God. And we know that this right here is what God is saying. Do y'all know I'm black? Do y'all know they done gave a whole network to a black woman? Do anybody know that? Do anybody know that by the time we get through marketing, I can house 1.6 billion people to look at my network? That 160 million is watching and they don't even know I'm there? Do y'all know that I can advertise whatever I want? I, I don't think y'all get that. I don't think y'all get that. Do y'all know that, that when Sister Valerie make her next record, I can just do commercials 24 hours a day if I wanted to all over the world? See, y'all don't, I'm not getting nobody to praise God right there. Do y'all know my next conference ain't got to buy no marketing? Do y'all know I can market 24-7 the threshing flow and anything else I want to market? Do y'all know I will look like Joni Lamb and Marcus Lamb sitting on that TV every day? Oh, Saying welcome to the Cross TV. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. All because I went to the Grand Canyon of the Spirit and I jumped off and killed myself. All because when I found the calendar like the prophetess found the writings when they found the writings and Josiah sent and said we want to know, is this the word of the Lord? And she came and said, this is it. When I found the secret, 
and I found the secret just in time to get in on it and I'm standing in the miraculous not the miraculous that said and this is a prophetic encounter and a check is in the mail we ain't talking about no check we talking about a lifetime of blessings We're talking about a word that God gave me in prayer the other day called satiation. Satiation is to receive more than you desire and more than you can manage. He said, that's what I'm doing in this hour. It's about saying, saturate me. And I was in the car and they satiate me. Oh, sweet spirit, satiate me. That means give me more than I can manage. Oh, sweet spirit, satiate me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, sweet. If you hear me singing on record, you better act like you ain't never heard her. Satiate me. Come on, why don't we say that? Come on, come on. Oh, sweet spirit, satiate me. Oh, sweet spirit. Oh, sweet spirit. Satiate me. Satiate me. I'm telling y'all, that's the new word. That's the new word. We just rewrote that song. So it's about when you do your new record, you're going to have to say, and I feel this, I got to reach back and get this. And you're going to start singing, oh, sweet spirit. Sashie. And they're going to start blowing up your Facebook saying, you singing the wrong words. You say, no, I'm not, baby. No, I'm not. It's a new word. I don't want him just to saturate. I want him to satiate too. Mm -hmm. Because I chose to try God by any means necessary. I got people in this building. It's my witness. Dr. Johnson, I got people in this building. I was saving up for my house and they had approved me for a $2.2 million loan. And I had found a house that was $6 million that they dropped to $2.4 million and I was getting ready to buy it. Had all my little down payment money and everything. And God said, you in a divine wonder. Now you can move in this house because it's going to always be a house. And if this one is gone, you can design another one. But don't miss September and October. And I scooped that money up like a scoop of ice cream and gave it to God and called the realtor and said, not right now. She said, well, is you sure? Because you already got the loan. I said, I'm positive. She said, well, why? And I was going to be a little hesitant. I said, because the biblical calendar said, this ain't the month to buy no house. All right. All right. This is the month to sow. So right now, I'm going to stay on my sister's couch, and we're going to bless the Lord. Amen, somebody. So the time y'all went to the Rolls Royce dealership, Filled out the application. The man said, "You." I said, no. God said, this ain't the time. It's about no Rolls Royce. I'm going to stay right here in this little Range Rover. Because I got to get past September and October. I don't want to miss my window. Because the Rolls Royce is going to always be there. And the next year is going to be another design. But the challenge wasn't me asking God, can I have it? The challenge was knowing that I could get it. Knowing I had the credit to get it. Knowing I had the down payment money. But I decided that I was going to empty out for God. And now with what God gave me, I can line Rose Royces up in all colors. I can park them in every country. www thecrosstv.com As my daddy said, you don't believe it, 
dial it up on your phone. Found the owner and CEO because I tried it. And pastor, in this place tonight, I felt that. I felt that. I took, I took the church to the same thing. I said, some of y'all, I know we ain't finna be no church no more, but don't be no fool and not believe me. Now, you may be a little upset because I ain't gonna be your pastor no more, but don't be crazy. And people in my church began to obey God and see supernatural stuff. They was like, what in the world is this? No, I'm talking about stuff that you ain't think of. I was sitting there the day before yesterday. I said, we need two more plane tickets to go to Africa. And my phone vibrated yesterday. And it was a Chinese man saying, how much is plane tickets to Africa? And do you need some plane tickets? I looked at my phone like this. He said, send me the itinerary. I said, God, what is this? He said, this is the realm where you don't have to ask. You've already sown for it. No, no, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. See, Pastor, I done got the secret. We keep having to pray for stuff. Because not only did we not sow, we didn't sow at the right season. Because the month of October is the month, Pastor, this is going to bless you, where it is supposed to appear chaotic on the top because something is growing underneath. And this is the month that if you expect for what's underneath to annihilate the chaos on top, you got to stick it underneath while the chaos is going on. And God spoke to me and said, 33 people in this building, Pastor. Businesses. Things that people have been waiting on God to do. And some things they don't even know that God going to do. And the beauty about it all, standing in this place tonight, is I don't, have a, I don't have a motive for saying it. I don't have a reason to say it. I don't have a reason to say nothing that I'm saying. I have preached out of my soul and I feel good and I feel like I can just run. You know when you done preached under the anointing, you know it wasn't, it, you can just go jogging after this. That's how I feel. Like I can go home, put on my jogging clothes and jog all the way to up there where Starbucks is and come back and, and say, now let's jump some rope. It's like I feel, I feel like I can run through a troop. So Sister Valerie, I don't have a motive for saying what I'm saying other than the fact that God is catching some people before the month go out so that he can transform your life like he did mine. I didn't have millions, but I emptied out and gave him what I had. And because my heart desired to become in alignment with his calendar, he gave me what he would have given the Jews. He gave me the world. Give me 33 envelopes. When he gave me this $1,007 seed, he said to tell 33 people in this building, somebody said, well, you know what? This, this is my last. I don't have no motive to ask you to do it. Because I ain't getting a dime of it. And I ain't talked to him. I don't know nothing. I'm just doing what God told me to do. He said, go catch the people before the month of October is up. Go catch the people. He said, some people, you got to catch them. Because this is the seed that's going to break open the supernatural. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I ride down the street, Pastor, and it hit me, and I'll just bust out, start crying. Saying, God, did you do this for me? Did you do this for me? Are you serious, Lord? And when I saw you on the floor today teaching, I said, the world need to hear this kind of solid personable, line up on line, really causing people to know you. And I had to keep turning my head toward the flag. That's why I got up and, and left out early. I said, because we're sitting in something that we don't even know we're in. And I want to get up and run all over this building. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Give me the mama lobs. And I'm going to tell you what he said. He said those that rush into it. Because if you got to sit down and contemplate about whether you want to do it or not, or whether you, I, I don't know if I can. Mm -mm. There comes a time in your life where you got to think about for one second is what I'm saving for and what I'm trying to do.